What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sean Gonzalez of Gonzalez Films. It's 2020. Happy New Year, by the way. We're like a week and a half in. This is crazy. 2019 just flew by super fast. I'm excited because I have a whole bunch of videos to show you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notifications tab. This way you're notified every time I upload a new video. Today we're doing a review of the Schneider Cinelux 2X anamorphic projector lens. We're gonna check that out right now. It's made by a company called Schneider Optics or Schneider Kruznash. I probably butchered that name. These lenses were made for de-squeezing 35 millimeter film from four by three down to its proper aspect ratio. And the model is Cinelux ES or Super Cinelux. So besides the lens, what you see on it right now is a custom built lens clamp and a lens collar to support the lens itself while it's on 15 millimeter rods. Brand new from the factory, you can get them from $3,000 to $5,000. But for anybody getting into anamorphics, I don't see why you'd pay that much for a projection lens over a true anamorphic lens. There's two versions of this lens. There's this one, which is flat on both sides. The other one is similar, but it has lips on the top and the bottom. This one's desired more because it's easier to mount a clamp onto the front of it. And the other one with the lips, it's a little harder to get a clamp on the front. And also it has these little focusing uh, screws on the front of it compared to this one, which you use Allen keys to focus. The lens itself doesn't have any rotating pieces on it. It's just this solid block holding these two pieces of glass on the inside. That's why this is one of the sharpest lenses there are out there for projection lenses. So you can't run and gun with this unless you have some sort of variable diopter in the front of it, which will help you focus closer. You can rack focus basically uh, with the front variable diopter. That's why I have this custom clamp and it's just better that way. Some people do use it without it, but it's just hard to focus and um, you're, you're gonna need a clamp no matter what. Without them, you can only focus to, I believe, 10 feet, from 10 feet to infinity. But with the way I have it set up, I use the FBD 16A, and you could focus from around three and a half feet all the way to an, uh, infinity. And on that, there's threads, so I can just screw on diopters or filters if I need so. It's just easier for me to run and gun that way. The front lens is about 61 millimeters, and the rear is about 50 millimeters. It's just about four inches long and the thread on the back is 67 millimeters, but it's kind of hard to find um, a threading to fit lens filters or something like that on the back. You have to have them custom made because they're just hard to find. I, I've scoured the web, but the only way is to have something custom made. It weighs about one pound, four ounces, minus an ounce and a half, so about one pound, two and a half ounces because of the ring, or 562 grams, minus 50 grams from the ring, so about 512 grams total. Most anamorphic lenses produce flares that everybody wants, you know, to make their films look cinematic. But this lens, you can't really see them unless you add a UV filter to the back of the lens, or if you add some type of streak wire down the back of it. They're very faint because the coatings on the lenses. You can remove the coatings on the lenses, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're risking messing up your lens, the sharpness, and you could just damage it physically and optically. I wouldn't do that, but I did see some okay results uh, for people trying to make the flares a little better. The flares didn't really come out all that good. It, it kind of looks smeary. Um, there's videos online showing how to remove the coatings, but like I said, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't want to risk damaging the lens or the glass. But if you want to be safe, like I said, just add a UV filter or a streak wire to the front of your taking lens and it should improve the flares. It's not going to be as good as the flares that this produces like organically, I guess you could say, but you're going to see a little bit more flaring. The bokeh on this lens is okay. It's not as funky as I thought it would be. I like a little more of a um, vintage look on my anamorphics. It doesn't mean for this lens you can't get any, you know, really nice cinematic shots. It's not a deal breaker, but I just prefer the, a little bit more of a character look to my lenses um, on the image. To use it, like I said earlier, you need some type of lens support, which I have the lens collar. You need a clamp in the front. If you can get a custom made clamp for the back with a step down ring to screw onto your taking lens, you can do it that way, but you're still going to need some type of lens support because this thing is pretty heavy. There's all types of front variable diopters out there right now. 
Um, there's custom ones, there's Rapido technology, which is the one that I use. There's the focus module, there's the hardcore DNA, which is made by Rectilux. There's so many options out there now. I just opted to go with the Rapido technology one. Now I should mention, I'm not getting paid to mention any of those names. This is just me mentioning the options that you have if you wanna use a scope like this. Even though this is a 35 millimeter projection lens, I use the 16, the FAD 16A, which is made for the 16 millimeter projection lenses. And there's a slight vignetting, not too much. It, I can deal with it. Um, but they do, Rapido does make a 35A version, which is bigger and uh, will, you know, it'll introduce less vignetting, maybe none if that, because this is a 35 millimeter projection lens and it's a little bit more pricier. Uh, I'm not sure how much it costs. I'll put the links down in the description. You can check out his website. And um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that if you do decide to go with a 35 millimeter projection lens, uh, there's options out there. There's options for the 16 millimeter scopes and the eight millimeter scopes. Uh, Rapido does also make uh, the FED-8A for the uh, smaller scopes. Overall, it's a great lens. If you can find one for a good price online, on eBay or Craigslist, I would suggest you get it. It'll give you that nice cinematic look. And uh, it's not a bad starting lens for shooting anamorphic. Just make sure, like I said, you get that lens collar for support. First and foremost, get the lens collar if you can or some type of support to hold the lens up because it's really heavy and you don't want it weighing your camera down or breaking any of the uh, hinges or screws. The price on these are only gonna go up because people are buying them up like crazy because the anamorphic look is in right now. Everyone thinks, you know, buying one of these is gonna give you that cinematic look, and it does, so I would say grab it if you can find a good deal. I picked this one up for about $100 a little over a year ago on eBay, and I've used it on a couple projects. It's really nice, really sharp. It just depends on what you're, you're going for, the look, the type of look you're going for. I just prefer the, the creamier bokeh and the vintage look that uh, the 16 millimeter scopes give you. Also, before I wrap up this video, usually when you buy these, they don't come with any protection for the front and the back of the glass. So what I did was I took this off of a peanut butter bottle and I painted it black. Luckily, it was the same size as the back of this lens. And I just sanded down the grooves that this screws onto the bottle with and it fits on here snug, perfect, and your glass is protected. For the front, all I did was I purchased a 77 millimeter cap offline, and it fits perfectly onto this clamp that I made. So that about sums it up for this video. I hope you found it useful and informational in helping you decide if you wanna purchase this lens or not. You guys have a good one. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate the support. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and drop a comment down below for the next video that you wanna see. I'll see you guys next time.